was little food being offered to rail passengers back in the day, and any that was offered wasn't necessarily that good. But Fred Harvey changed all that beginning in the 1890s with Harvey House Restaurants, providing high-quality food for rail passengers across Texas. He staffed his new restaurant with young women of good character, who earned up to $25 a month plus tips, and the job included room and board, good pay for the time. They were expected to have a crisp and neat appearance at all times and were not to marry for the first few months of employment. They became known throughout Texas for excellence and uniformity of service in their iron, black, and white uniforms all the way through the 1940s. Mary Jane Elizabeth Coulter was the chief architect and interior designer for the Harvey Company. It was rare for a woman to be in such a powerful position at the time, but a chance encounter with Fred Harvey's daughter, Minnie, gave her the chance she needed. She worked with the Harvey Company and the Santa Fe Railway, designing structures throughout the West and even designed the China for the super cheap dining cars with First Peoples motifs. Dr. Mary Engel Pennington was a chemist, refrigerator engineer, and was responsible for developing the process of quick freezing and dry packing perishable foods. Without these processes, shipping foods by train would have been nearly impossible. fifties. The block of buildings here in the center are these buildings across the street. Really? You see this one here is another time sort of fountain. And you can see the sign on the back. So everything is sitting here the same way that it is. So this is as if you were sitting over on, on the uh, other side and uh, having your regime. Cool. Yeah. That's the Vogel saying antiques there and the uh, post office is around the corner over here. Wow. And the, uh, the club that runs this train periodically are doing a run day tomorrow and the circus in town. So they're going to have a circus parade and all sorts of stuff like that. Oh, that would be cool. These are just the uh, advance party, I guess, here. Wow. It's actually one of the last caboosers that was built. You can see it's Missouri Pacific. And it was probably used in this area because we know after it was retired, it was sold to Dow Chemical down at Freeport, and they used it down around their chemical plant there for a few years. And then they had a big contest to give it away, donated it to the Children's Museum in Herman Park. They had it for a few years down there, and then when they needed that room for an expansion, then we obtained it. I, I'm so not sure whether we bought it or whether they gave it to us, but it did end up here. Uh, this has been repainted about two years ago now, so it looked like it did uh, shortly before it was taken out of service in the early 1980s. Some of these will change. Everywhere you see red, uh, let's see the train that just came through here. Okay, that's the train that just came through here. He came from Beaumont and on UP, and then he went on to his own tracks here, and he's down towards Kettleton now. He's being held there because there's another train coming north down here. So they'll pass at that siding. And then
is this? Gas pipe or something? It's uh, steam piping. Uh, it, that's the way it's heated. If you look here, you can see all the pipe running through the baseboards here. So there's hot uh, and cold water, steam and condensate. That would have been how they heated the car. And that would be the control design. So this was done quite a while ago. But uh, it was done without any drawings, without any photos. Uh, the lady who did the uh, renovation <coughs> had to look at woodwork that was left because a lot had been damaged. Uh, she looked at photos of other cars that were built around the same time and this is just an educated guess as to what it looked like.